Well, we're talking about prayer. Our first series of the new year uh, and the, the month of January, something we've started over the last couple of years. One of our, uh, our core values at Pineville Church is to pray first. Am I asking God before I act? You know, making sure that we are making prayer a priority. In a, in a series like this, though, as, we've, as we talk about prayer, you know, we, we wonder, I don't know about you, like, what exactly is prayer? I, I've, I've learned a lot about prayer over the, over the last, uh, of the years of my life, of, of even praying when I was younger, wondering what prayer was like. I used to think prayer was, was you know, asking God for, for lots of different things, and, and that's pretty much what my prayer life consisted of. But I've, I've learned some things over the years as I've spent time in, in prayer. I, I prayed in, in front of lots of people. I prayed by myself. I have, uh, I've, I've, prayed while I am driving with my eyes open, right? Uh, at times, there have even been moments while I'm driving, you know, especially if I'm going between places, I've literally th uh, thought what it would be like if Jesus was sitting right next to me and just talking to him. I prayed when I've been out on runs and, and when I've been training and running and, <clears throat> or just in my everyday running that I would do. And I know some people probably saw me and wondered what is going on with him, there have been times when I have felt like my prayers have hit the ceiling or been detached, going nowhere. There have been moments that I have prayed and felt a very real presence of God that's been so powerful, so strong, that it causes me to just be in complete awe of who he is. There have been times when I've been praying for people and my heart has been so broken and, and so overwhelmed that I, I just know that he hears me and I have to tell him and I have to trust that he hears my prayer. You know, really, at the end of the day, prayer is the way we listen and we talk with God. But it's also, prayer is very, very much a key part of deepening our faith. There's a reason that, that Jesus himself believed, believed in the regular rhythm of prayer, the, the regular practice of prayer, the, the regular engagement in prayer. And Jesus also clearly had a way that he prayed. It's the way that he taught his disciples to pray. The, the emphasis that he, he would put on how we communicate with God. Jesus taught them at, at his prayer in, in Matthew 5 and Luke, or Matthew 6 and, and Luke 11, the, the, what's called the Lord's Prayer. The prayer begins with two words, our Father, our Father. The emphasis there being on this God that we could have a relationship with in such a way that we could call him Father. It was intimate. And the words themselves in that prayer, the prayer itself really is a life-forming prayer. That piece of paper on your chair there has a QR code. If you want to follow along with the notes and quotes, it'll take you to the church app. But this isn't going to be on the screen, but I believe this is important. Jesus knew that the words we speak in prayer will eventually reflect what is in our heart. Jesus knew that the words we speak in prayer will eventually reflect what is in our heart. You may not start there, but if you regularly pray with these words of Jesus in mind, they will also find their ways into your heart. In fact, I would venture to say, and we'll talk more about this in a moment, but if we pray, and even if we focus our prayers on the words of Jesus, these words will become how we live our lives. That's why prayer matters. 
And not just that, but the things we say in our prayers matter. The way we think about prayer matters. The way we listen for the voice of God in our lives matters. Here's another note that's not on the screen, but it'll be in those notes and quotes. The value we put on prayer will ultimately become the value we put on our faith. The value we put on prayer will ultimately become the value we put on our faith. That's how important, that's how powerful prayer is. But here's another truth to remember. We have to determine to be open to letting prayer change us. We have to be open. We have to determine that our hearts and our minds will be open to letting prayer actually turn, turn, change us. When we open our hearts, when we open our minds to the impact of prayer, it will change us. And honestly, that is one of the most profound mysteries of prayer, that it can actually change our hearts. It can actually change our minds. But we have to view prayer differently than what it can easily turn into. Like I said, when I was a kid and I used to think prayer was just a wish list I had for God, a lot of people think that it's like a genie in a body, in a bottle kind of thing, right? A genie in a bottle idea of prayer. I don't know, the last couple of years I've watched like there's been a, a new remake of the movie Aladdin, right, with Will Smith. The genie in the bottle comes out and this idea that a genie can grant certain wishes we have. That's how a lot of people view prayer with God and when they don't get their wishes or things don't turn out like they wish that they would then it impacts them but that's not how it works it's not about a long list of wishes and demands listen here's another thing that's not going to be on the screen it's going to be in those notes and quotes listen carefully prayer is about an ongoing conversation with God that eventually will become an intimate experience with God's holiness. An ongoing conversation with God that eventually becomes an intimate experience with God's holiness. This is exactly what Jesus knew when he taught his disciples how to pray. If they committed themselves to praying as he showed them to pray, of literally repeating his words, then his life would take hold of theirs. His heart would take hold of their hearts. That is why this first prayer, pray first series that we're doing in, in 2024 is focusing on the words of Jesus. Last week, we talked about how prayer helps us to remain in Jesus. We were, we're looking at the, the book of John chapter 15 and hearing the words of Jesus talking about remaining in him and he remains in us. He talks about how he is the true grapevine, right? Telling his disciples and that they are the branches that are connected to him, the true grapevine. And he's really, what he's trying to do is really trying to get them ready for the life that is ahead of them. When, when he will be crucified and, and when they will wonder, where is he? Even when he comes back to life, he does not stay with them in a physical sense. So it's imperative that they pay attention to his words and to take his words at heart to focus on his words and to pray as he has taught them to pray. In fact, his words, talking about his words, there in verse seven of chapter 15, Jesus even says that his words can remain in them. And when his words are in them, they can ask for whatever they want and it will be granted it will be granted because it starts with Jesus. The branch is part of the vine. And these words are even for us today. That if Jesus' words are in us, then his wants become our wants, right? When Jesus' words remain in us, his wants become our wants. When we pray in that kind of mentality, then here's, what's hap here's what's ha what happens. Prayer connects us, it guides us, 
It cultivates us like the soil of our lives. The soil of our minds and our hearts, it prepares us. It helps us to stay connected to Jesus like branches to a vine. So, it's much more important than just an idea about Jesus. This is a spiritual, life-changing connection that is supposed to be molding and shaping our very lives. It is supposed to be moving us toward becoming more and more like Jesus, helping us to make decisions with Jesus in mind, helping us to orientate, orientate our lives around the presence of Jesus, helping us to be anchored to the truth of a relational God, a relational God, the, the spirit of God flows through this vine to the branches to make this happen. This God who wants us to know him deeply and for our own lives to be a representation of his presence in this world to where one day when we step from this life into the next, it'll be simply stepping from one room to the next because Jesus has already made his home in our hearts. But let's keep going with the words of Jesus today. Let's pick up where we left off in John chapter 15. Starting in verse nine is where we'll pick it up. As we continue to listen and to focus and to see how prayer can help us to have Jesus remain in us and us in him. Verse nine, Jesus continues on talking to his disciples and he says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Can we say this next sentence together? Just this one sentence, ready? Here to get all together. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. Now notice, it does not say that he stops loving us. It's different. We can remain in his love. He says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. All together now, love each other in the same way I have loved you. So the question that we're going to attempt to answer today, that we're going to focus on, is how does prayer help us to remain in Jesus' love? Let's spend a moment on that, just that first sentence there, verse 9, that Jesus says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Notice how connected that is to that last sentence of that whole section. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. The Father has loved me, so I love you even as the Father loves me, right? Like this, this love that is between Jesus, God the Son, and God the Father. And now he's saying, I love you even as the Father loves me. He's speaking to his disciples who have walked with him, who have been there when Jesus has healed people, who have, who have seen Jesus take just a few loaves of bread and, and some fish, and he's turned it into a meal that has multiplied for thousands of people. They have heard Jesus pray to God the Father. They have heard him say, Father, I do this so that you will be glorified. They have heard, they have seen, they have watched how God has responded to Jesus's prayers. They have seen how this relationship has been working out. They have watched and seen how much the Father loves Jesus. And now Jesus is inviting them and inviting us into this relationship. Hmm. Those who put their faith in him and recognize the truth about who he is, the truth that they need to be rescued, that they need salvation, that they need redemption and healing. Jesus is inviting us 
into this relationship, into this love. This love that Jesus is welcoming his followers to experience. When our hearts are open to Jesus, when we pray and when we spend any amount of time even reflecting on what God has done for us. You ever done that? You ever spent time just thinking about what God has done for you through Jesus? Allowing our reverence for the creator of the whole universe who would be willing to find a way for us for us to have a choice to love him back. Think about that for a second. That the creator of the whole universe, the one who could do whatever he wants to do, he actually gives us a choice to love him back. Pray about that, and I promise you, it will reveal to you something, just how overwhelming I love that song, how reckless, how unstoppable, how unrelenting the love of God is. Aren't you thankful for that? When you know that someone loves you and has your best interest at heart, when you know that, it draws you. First point, prayer can reveal God's love. Prayer can reveal God's love. And inside of this love, when we live inside of this love, trusting and believing, and and really we live by following Jesus, we live by looking to Jesus, as we pray, as we live, as we talk and walk with Jesus, we will find the way to God the Father who is revealed in Jesus Christ. To walk with Jesus, to talk with Jesus, is to walk with God the Father. The same God who was at the very beginning is the same God who is revealed in Jesus Christ. There's a point in the chapter before this, in John 14, where Jesus' disciples are gathering with him. He's He's pre- he is preparing them. This is like this final dialogue that, that actually extends over a couple of chapters here in, 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 in the book of John. Jesus is talking about how he's gonna go away and that where he goes, he'll prepare a place for them, but he will come back to them. He also tells them, you know, that they can trust him because that they've seen the Father in him. And yet his disciples, even as they're hearing him, even as they've seen all this happen, they're still like, what are you talking about, Jesus One of his disciples, Philip, is like, show us the way to the Father. And this is what Jesus says to him in in chapter 14, verse 9. He says, have I been with you all this time, Philip? And yet you still don't know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? See that relationship? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it so that the Son will bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Jesus' love, the love that Jesus has is the love that God has. Jesus is the way to God. Jesus is the way to God's love. And prayer can help us to see this and to know it and to lean into it. This is the relationship between Jesus the Son and God the Father. This loving relationship where they walk in step with each other, they know what each other are gonna do. It's that close and Jesus is saying, we can know God like that because of Jesus. That's how powerful our prayers are. We can know God. But there's more to how prayer can help us remain in Jesus' love. 
my second point, prayer can humble us. Prayer can humble us. Back to the words of Jesus in 1510. Jesus says, when you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. When we pray to know what the will of God is, what the will of Jesus is, when we pray, God, show me how I should live. Show me what I should do over here. Tell me what my next step should be. <laughs> you ever prayed like that? What do I do now, God? By the way, to pray for God's will will always line up with what Jesus' will is. But when we are seeking what the will of God is for our lives, we have to come back to the words of Jesus. We have to come back to the commandments of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is asked by this Jewish religious leader what the greatest commandment is of all time, right? What's the most important thing we should do in order to show how serious we are about desiring to follow God, about loving God with our whole being, right? What's the, what's the most important thing we can do? And this is what Jesus says in verse 37 of 22, Matthew chapter 22. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. I think that covers everything. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important, Jesus says. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Listen, anyone who is serious about following Jesus has to be serious about what Jesus says to do. That's a good place to maybe say amen. amen. I'm gonna give you one more chance. Anyone who is serious about following Jesus has to be serious about what Jesus says to do. Otherwise, they're a fraud. That's what Jesus is saying in John 15. If you're serious about loving me, like, it's more than Facebook official. It's more than just calling yourself a Christian. If you're serious about loving me, if you're serious about wanting to remain in his love, then you've got to pay serious attention to what he says. And not only do you have to pay attention to it, you have to actually do what he says. When we pray these words of Jesus, when we pray about them, when we ask God, what does it really look like to remain in your love? God will lead us right back to these words. We will see that it is about loving God with our whole being and loving others. To love people we come in contact with who are different than we are. To love people that sometimes even get on our nerves, yes. To love people, listen, the way that the church is supposed to work, it's supposed to be made up of people of all different types of people. You don't get to pick and choose who you love. You don't get to pick and choose who you think deserves your love. If you are walking around with that kind of attitude, you might need to go back to the drawing board. You need to spend some time in prayer <laughs> and maybe do a little more listening. There's no way that God would tell you something or give you permission to do something that is opposite of what Jesus says, that is opposite of Jesus' words. When we choose to think we are better than someone else, when we choose to view someone differently than the way Jesus has viewed them, <laughs> Here's a better. When we choose to view other people differently than the way Jesus has chosen to view us, there's something wrong. And by that I mean when we refuse to love people 
When we refuse to love others, we are refusing to obey Jesus. It doesn't get any more simpler than that. I do not understand how people can call themselves Christians and act like that. I get it. There are people who want to make it something that it's not. There are people who will abuse the name of Jesus, but they will have to answer for that someday. Listen, prayer can help us to have a humble spirit and a humble heart because that is when we realize just what God has done for us. That is when we realize how much God loves us. That is when we realize we have no right to not show love to others. Prayer can help us to have a humble spirit because we'll realize it is only by God's goodness and his mercy that we even can begin to grasp this love. That we can even have the chance to remain in Jesus' love. Which leads me to my last point. Prayer can make us aware. Prayer can make us aware. If we go back to the, the thought of the Holy Spirit of God, who helps us to be connected to the true vine. This Holy Spirit of God who helps us to be humble and to have a humble spirit and to have a humble mentality. If we follow Jesus and we actually take him at his words, well, even back to John 14, the, the chapter before 15, right? Like Jesus says again, this must be pretty important. He says, if you love me, obey my commandments. But I love this next part. He says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later be, will be with you. That's what we have with us. That is how prayer can make us aware. It is the Holy Spirit of God that can come and enter into our space who helps us in our mind and in our thinking in the way that we live. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God to help us to remember remain in Jesus' love. Not by our own power, but the power of God who has given us the Holy Spirit. It's a promise, it is a gift, and he is with us. He is with us. It is the Holy Spirit who helps us even to realize and to hear how much God loves us, to even hear these words from 1 John chapter four, when it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. What's it say? Just that first part of it. Would you read just those four words? Ready? This is real love. This is real love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. He says, dear friends, since God loved us that much, mm, we surely ought to love each other. <laughs> He says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. You want proof? If God is living in you, and his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. He has given us the spirit as proof. You know when it's hard to love somebody? The spirit will help you. Hard to forgive someone? Again, we've talked about that. Doesn't mean they get off scot-free, but the spirit will help you to have freedom. 
But it gets even better. Listen, listen to these words from the Apostle Paul. This takes us right back to prayer and the power of prayer and how the Spirit works in prayer. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groaning that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, when you pray and you focus on the words of Jesus, when the words of Jesus are in you, I promise you the Holy Spirit will help you see beyond what you can even imagine he will give you the strength to love he will provide the joy that will overflow in the hardest saddest times of your lives this is the gift of God the Holy Spirit prayer can make us aware it is in prayer that God can awaken us to his voice speaking within us drawing us closer to his heart and deeper into love with Jesus to love him more, to give us strength to obey his commandments, to love our enemies, to love those that we don't understand, to love those who hurt us. This This is how we remain in his love. He never stops loving us. But how we show our love for him through the help and the power of the Holy Spirit, we show our love for him not only in in saying that we love him with our whole being, but we show our love by how we love each other and we love other people. Would you stand? Would you bow your heads and close your eyes as we move into a time of reflection? I want to give you some prayer prompts in this time of reflection. Prayer prompts to maybe some questions that you could ask God as you pray, as you're standing there, I think these are on the notes and quotes. You could even use them during this week. God, do I love you with my whole being? Or is there some part of you you're holding back? Some area of your life that you haven't made him first in? God, do I love you with my whole being? (laughs) Jesus, do I believe you love me? I was thinking about that. Do Do we really believe that he loves us? Jesus loves us as much as the Father loves him. Do you believe that? Do you believe and trust in his love? A simple prayer, Lord Jesus, would you humble my heart and spirit today? God, if I am lacking in my love for you and for others, would you help me to see it? Would you help me to have the courage to love? It's a risky love. It costs Jesus. But aren't you thankful that Jesus decided it was worth the cost to love us? Today, I want to give anyone in this room a chance to maybe even make a first step toward Jesus, to give their life to him. As we do each week, it's a simple prayer. 
It goes like this. Jesus, I give you my life. I confess my need for the forgiveness of my sins, my, my selfishness, my pride, my arrogance. And finally, I trust that you do forgive me. And I receive your love. Receive his love today. Receive it. Don't reject it. Don't push it away. Receive it. Let his love transform you and then begin to live in his love. Receive his love. And the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive. That's the love of God shown to us in Jesus Christ. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Amen.